Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We do have uh, uh, to take the look at the papers and what they have uh, for us this morning. Indeed, um, I'm joined by Messi, who has been around. And, uh, of course, we sit together to do justice to these headlines. Messi, good to have you um, with us on the breakfast this morning. No, thank you so much, Kofi, yes, and indeed, it's good um, to be here. Yes, indeed. Uh, and, of course, uh, we once again apologize to our, our viewers for the uh, technicalities that made us start uh, late, uh, but our engineers are working hard to solve the issues. That being said, uh, hopefully we can have a guest, uh, Chris Kende Wandu, who is a, a chartered arbitrator. I think you've not heard us use that term before. And uh, Mr. Chris has to buy us some wine today, you know, so we can, we can uh, officially watch that new uh, title. I have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, starting with the stories uh, on the front page of the Punch newspaper, Naira deadline is a big word on the minds and the lips of a lot of people. Uh, the paper says, banks, fuel stations, reject old notes, ignore Supreme Court order. Uh, the kickers to that, to the writers to that rather, uh, Buhari and Mayfield meet again. That should be the fifth meeting since Mayfield came back from his, uh, his uh, travels. Uh, Buhari and Mayfield meet again. Oh, as old Nara deposits hit over two trillion Naira, that's got a lot of repetition. Um, next one, POS operators, uh, depositors panic. Uh, flood banking halls with old currency. Fuel marketers blame banks. Courts turn back lawyers with expired money. Oh, my God. All right, uh, more from the punch. North will benefit greatly if uh, coal money, from coal money oil field, Tinubu. Share love on vows day, not HIV, NACA. It's been a while since I heard from, from NACA. And that's a very important advice. Share love, not HIV, on Val Stair. I hope they're listening. Messi is already in the spirit with her. Oh, red. come on. Caught me some All slack. Right. <laughs> Atiku Rivers Rally cancelled to prevent deaths. PDP. Atiku Rivers Rally cancelled to prevent deaths. PDP. Sad that, uh, you know, that is what politics in Nigeria has gotten to. Um, and I hope that people will tell themselves the truth. You know, I see a lot of comments on social media you know, when we see some of the drama in the Nollywood on our screens from politicians. But these are the issues. All of that should not, you know, deceive you from the realities on ground. You know, candidates are being attacked, harassed, the PDP uh, presidential campaign council head or lead in River State just, uh, uh, recently survived an assassination attempt. We saw the gunshot bullets on his vehicle. You know, those, those are, these are the real issues. Not, it's, not, it's not drama. Life's at stake, and the people are not going to sit down and allow you, that's their modus operandi, to come and take power from them, you know. And you can see some of the things that are happening. The whole rally in a state has been cancelled because of the violence in the past few weeks. All right? So this is not, about, it's not a laughing matter. You know, if you want to be entertained, maybe you, 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 I don't know, man. So people need to realize that the real issues that need to be focused on, not the drama. It's very important. All right, more from the punch. I regret raising coup alarm for Nikai Day after DSS grilling. Um, do people still listen to Fanny Kayo Day? Uh, do why people not? Still, they'll still follow him? Well, a lot of people still follow him. Buhari launches security equipment, warns police against politics. Uh, Whitney protesters besiege Chrisland as government orders inquest. Uh, here we go again. They need to stay at home and, and allow the, the procedure, you know, run this course, that inquest to be done. It's not by, by, by this, you know, it's not by this. They stay at home, let the investigations go on. That, that, I think that is what we want to see. If it's going on, then, of course, we would all be glad to see its conclusion so we can know what really happened. AK-47 bearing pastor arrested, policeman faces probe, church apologizes. Then we talked about that earlier. A breach. Data Bureau probes 110 companies. Some of the headlines on the front page of uh, The Punch. Well, we turn our attention from The Punch. Uh, let's take a quick look at the independent, Daily Independent uh, newspaper this morning. 2023 general elections, that's what, you, that's what you have. Buhari to please. The nation, global community watching you. Uh, the president is saying that you know i think this happened shortly after you know after that particular statement uh, he met with godwin and Mephile. 
Buhari to please the nation, global community watching you. IGP again asks police to bar states quiz security outfit from polls. And that's what you find on uh, the Daily Independent. There's a bold caption there. Aviation fuel hits 800 naira per liter as airline operators cry out. Elections won't hold in 240 polling units nationwide. This is according to INEC and warns political parties over violent campaigns. The rider you find underneath that caption, this will be the crux of our conversation as we proceed. You also have another header saying, 2023 polls, we have no preferred candidates. The United States of America is going to say, well, I'm just wondering, should they have a preferred candidate, really? What happens to sovereignty? Labor Party asks security agencies to stop attacks on supporters in Lagos. Federal government berates the United States, the United Kingdom over frivolous travel advisories. I mean, for every other time you remember someone used to work frivolous, it feels like they're really angry, like it, it's almost out of hand. And you're like, this is a warning. You have to stop this. Well, that's exactly how, you know, the Daily Independent captions it this morning. And Cash Crunch, a mayor fully sported in Asarok, meets Buhari again. And I like I rightly mentioned, just after, you know, the president had unveiled uh, patrol vehicles for the elections that would help police officers, then that meeting happened. We will get those who stole Calabar Ports Project money. Oh, really? Kofi, do you know this? That's what Atiku is saying. Uh, I think this is quite interesting. And uh, it's something you want to, you know, pay attention to now. Bauer must go protest thickens. As more CSOs join action, Bauer must go protest tickets as more join CSO uh, action. Nigerians hungry, angry, so 10 runs. It's a lot of uh, word right there. Nigerians hungry, angry, so 10 runs. Bank rejects old narrow notes, disregards Supreme Court order. I think this morning on my way to work, I don't think that's what happened. I was listening to the radio and apparently a banker called in on the show and she was sharing her thoughts. And one of the things that she said, I mean, she sounded very frustrated that there's no directive whatsoever, that they don't know whether they should go to the left or to the right. Really, they, they have no, I mean, they can't give her the old narrow notes because, you know, they haven't gotten any instructions. And so everything seemed to be very hazy and not very clear. This exactly. I could feel the frustration from her voice and when she was part of the conversation that she herself doesn't even have the money. She over how many weeks now she can't, you know, boast of any uh, cash in her hand and, and that can be very frustrating. But um, that's some kind of rhyme you have there. Nigerians angry and hungry. The Sultan wants Nigerians. Uh, I like to take this. Nigerians paid to emergency next CEO of uh, Giva. The Vaccine Alliance. Okay, it's also another interesting headline you should check out this morning on the Daily Independent. But that's the much we can take. All right, and the last paper we have on our table this morning happens to be uh, The Guardian. We look at stories on the front page of The Guardian. Uh, of course, uh, no surprises to see that the picture they are using there is one of uh, 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 people trying to... I'm sure it looks like that ATM is not really dispensing any money. Uh, um, just there. I saw a video yesterday of persons in Abuja sleeping uh, at a bank ATM point. Um, anyway, uh, the big story on the front page of The Guardian, uh, again, Buhari meets Emir Feli, keeps mom on Naira Swap. What are they meeting for? Uh, I mean, we need to know what they met for and they need to give us uh, something. <laughs> CBN embrace e Naira internet banking as alternatives to cash, what CBN is saying. Uh, Apex Bank loses $5 billion naira to hoarding, explains how to exchange old notes. BDC's profit from Naira scarcity, lower exchange rate for cash transaction. I don't know if that's a, a positive thing. Iqbazu, worried about cash scarcity on traders in Nabia, commissioner says. Niger governor orders police to arrest anyone rejecting old notes. Uh, uh, you know... I think that the Supreme Court also needs to uh, be wary of um, making the situation worse. 
you know, like I said before, I do not know if my lords, the honorable justices, uh, did anything concerning economics or finance, you know, econometrics and, and all that when they were in school. You know, um, some things you should, I don't know, my opinion is that they should just say, you know what, um, you know, this is a, this is it's beyond us, you know, we would just hand it back to the fiscal authorities or the monetary authorities, sorry, to, to, to determine, you know, because, because if, if the monetary authorities, in this case, Central Bank of Nigeria say, okay, this is what we need to do to strengthen, then it means that if they increase the exchange rate tomorrow, someone can go to the court and say, no, that increase in the exchange rate is not good for my business. I want them to take it down. You know, we have a lot of confusion. You know, we have a lot of conflict. We have uh, the, the, the policy you turns and somersaults like CBN is already too much. You know, so the, what Nigerians want, I think, now is let's know what we're doing. I think that is, that is the inconsistency see itself. does not bode well for uh, confidence in the economy. does not bode well for, it's a lot of confusion. Imagine now people are saying, oh, the deadline hasn't passed. And then, of course, that they're waiting for the, uh, the Supreme Court to, and why do you adjourn such a case? You know, what, what is the need to adjourn such a case? It's, I think it's a straightforward matter. You know, so you, you, you are journey for how many days, five days, or is this six or seven, one week? So apparently tomorrow. Yes, you know, but the question is, what, what is the need to adjourn such a matter? I mean, are they having any, um, maybe they'll try, they want to meet with the, uh, the parties to try and understand better what is going on. I don't know, you know, but, but um, the inconsistency is, I think, is being made worse by, by the Supreme Court. People are on tenterhooks, you know, they, they're not sure. So we need to know what is going on. Let's know what we are doing, okay? Um, and that goes to the central bank as well. Uh, more from the, the Guardian. Rivers purchase of Kidney Island makes uh, stakes in OML 11 irreversible court tells SPDC. Indeed, the Kidney Island is an island owned by uh, uh, SPDC and River State for years. You understand? And uh, it's also related to oil exploration activities. We have OML 11, and um, the state government has said they bought it. You know, I think they've paid money into uh, the account of SPDC or whoever it is that it's supposed to pay it into. I do not know. But uh, the company is saying that, um, no, we don't want to sell. And so they've gone to court, and the court, this is a high court uh, in Port Harcourt, not surprisingly, has said that uh, uh, Shell cannot reverse the sale, all right, of, of that island to the government. You know, so that, that's a, it's an interesting case, you know, it's an, but the River State government hardly loses cases in, in Kofi, court. Kofi, we've been told that we have, yes. you know, uh, Chris, who's a chartered oh, We have Chris, okay, all right, right, all right. Chris, good morning to you. All right, sincere apologies um, for the technical issues uh, with uh, the Zoom and all that. But great to have you join us. Without wasting time, um, we'll take your thoughts quickly on the fact that uh, the president and the central bank governor have met, I think, for the fifth time since uh, uh, the CBN governor returned from his travels abroad. Um, we don't know what they have decided, but they kept quiet. And the Guardian has given us a nice way uh, to describe it. They say... Again, Buhari meets Emir Fili, keeps mum on Naira swap. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, before going on, let me say uh, happy Valentine's Day to Nessie. She's looking smart, she keeps mum on her Um oh, Happy uh, Valentine's Day to you, Nessie. Thank you. Now so to much. your question. Chris, why um, is my Valentine's the, Day wish? <laughs> the Central Bank uh, um, Governor met with the President yesterday. Um, and to me, that doesn't make any sense for me. Um, what everybody is expecting now is um, a ruling by the Supreme Court, which is scheduled for tomorrow, the 15th. Don't forget that the Supreme Court on Thursday put a hold to the uh, deadline given by the Bank of Nigeria for the face out of old notes. And that in itself has thrown a lot of um, fun in the woods, and um, there is confusion everywhere. And uh, unfortunately, uh, so either for whatever reason, apart from the statement issued by the um, AGF that the government is going to abide by the that decision or the ruling by the um, APES court, there has not been any statement from the Central Bank of Nigeria. 
either for the banks to continue to collect the old notes or to issue the old notes. So what you now have is total confusion everywhere. And it's a fact, as um, rightly reported by Punch, that banks, um, Nigerians, supermarkets, petrol stations, and the rest of them, a whole lot of them are no longer accepting the old Naira notes. I went to a big, uh, a big store uh, during the weekend, um, and I parked my vehicle, and, um, and then when it was time for me to leave to pay for the parking, and I gave them the old note, they said they are not accepting it, that I should use my POS, I should use my ATM card. I thought they need my ATM card, and um, I was debited, but they, they said the thing did not reflect in the other thing. So I was confused, I had to start looking for how to pay. So that is the confusion. Nigerians cannot transact online. You see that a lot of decline uh, POS or um, using online uh, platform because they are, the online platforms are saturated. If they were doing 10 in the past before this policy, now they are doing uh, about 100, 150, and that in itself can choke the, the, the network. Don't forget that it's a particular bank, um, but for over almost one week, their online platform couldn't work. And although they have heard that it was hard or whatever, but it couldn't work. So that is his condition everywhere, too, and nobody is saying anything. So he's meeting with the, um, the president PSC of what he said. He said that he's going to print more new Naira notes as directed by the Council of State on, that met on Friday or reissuing the old one or uh, should Nigeria, the, even the bank, if you read the point, that punch report is very, very comprehensive. It gives you state by state reports. How banks, banks, not the bank, the banks were not, uh, we are, uh, we are stated, the branches were stated. And where people go to deposit old Naira notes and they were refused and refused. What is the central bank? Is? One thing is about law, as a agriculture of law is that, yes, law is made, but a law that is possible is to make effect. So even if the Supreme Court is given a directive that should accept it, are you going to be the woman that is for your granite to force her to accept a hundred Naira and one thousand old Naira notes or five hundred Naira notes? The solution to this problem is that the central bank should flood the banks with new Naira notes and that will solve the problem. Until we get, the, uh, until we do that, we'll continue to uh, continue on this uh, journey to nowhere. All right, Chris, uh, let's take a look at the daily independent newspaper this morning. It talks about the elections and the meeting the president had with the police uh, telling them, you know, to be cautious because the nation, which is Nigeria, and of course the global community, uh, will be looking out for them in these elections. What are your thoughts, really? Yes, um, it's a timing warning. Uh, the president, don't forget that yesterday, um, the president commissioned uh, various uh, vehicles and operational vehicles and other equipment that were acquired by the police, about 127 vehicles, among tanks, carriers, um, ammunition and the rest of them. And we were using that occasion to be able to tell them that the, the world is looking at them and the eyes of the people on them. There's a limit to which the police can do because if you look at the number of police we have, uh, in Nigeria, we don't have enough. They are performed incredibly well in some of the elections we've had in the past um, few months, the one in Osho, ATP, and one or two other states. Yeah, those are just target elections. Where you have high deployment of policemen of about 30, 35,000 to a particular state. But come, um, uh, February 25th and also in March, you have to have a deployment of police to all the participants of the federation and the FCC. That in itself is going to cause a lot of huge problem. When you look at the high level of insecurity that is being experienced, as we are experiencing, especially in the north, the resurgence of, uh, um, insecurity in states like Zamfara and the like. Then they also have the education and training that is going up in the South East. So it would be a huge problem. But I hope and believe that the security will be completely, the police security will be completely complemented by other security agencies like the defense, uh, Nigerian defense, um, um, uh, the, the army and, um, other, other relevant uh, security agencies so that and we have and because you cannot have a free and fair election as been conversed by the president in a state of insecurity. So uh you can also see that in the past few months there have been 
burning down of INEC offices, especially in the southeast and some other parts of the country. So the security um, are the, is going to be the number one, one of the number one cardinal issues during the 2020 election, and I hope that the police are up to it and uh, making sure that everybody that comes out to vote will be well secured to cast their votes and go back to their homes. Right, but Chris, you look at the fact that these uh, equipment are mostly, if not all, um, uh, crowd control and anti-riot uh, equipment, you know, uh, hot water cannon, uh, APCs, you know, barbed wire carrying vehicles, we saw a lot of, I mean, is this what you need to ensure that election is free and fair? Crowd control, you know, equipment and vehicles, anti-riot equipment and vehicles. Is that what you need to ensure free and fair elections? Because I don't know if it's the people who will be... No, those equipment, those equipment we are not specifically bought for the election. The election is just two days. After the election, there will be issues. Um, that borders on security. So they are not acquiring those equipment for the election. But in terms of security, nothing is off the table. And um, when you plan for logistics, eventuality, you don't know what to happen. If you see what has happened in Lagos in the last weekend, you see the attack on um, uh, on the supporters of a neighbor party. So many people were injured. And we have seen those pockets of attacks across Nigeria. You, 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 you specifically was um, talking about um, the cancellation of the PDP rally in River State. Where somebody has become a lord and is preventing Nigerians from coming, other Nigerians to come and canvass for food in the state. We are not in a one party state. We are not in a one man state uh, with what Wiki, Yeto Wiki and its cohorts are doing in River. This is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I have believed that by now, the federal mind supposed to have been brought to prove will be brought to bear in River State so that every political party will have the uh, opportunity of um, campaigning and that will not as well. So um, if something of sort is you don't know what uh, will turn out in River State, you think that people just go there and vote and the end of it all, it turns violent. Would those equipment be used? It's part of um, uh, logistics for policing and security. So there's nothing on power to do. What as I said earlier on, the basic thing is making sure that um, those police stations are well guided and well policed so that we can have free and fair election where people work in and cast their votes without being harassed, without being killed. Election shouldn't be uh, the way we, we practice in Nigeria, it do or die are fair. You know, that plan. People even go to work on election days, they go to the UK, they go to the US and more advanced countries. People just go to the office, come out, vote, and go home. Here we declare public holiday, we say people should stay at home, we, we pass people, we stop people from moving. For over 24 hours or 48 hours before the election and after election, that is not the reflection of what election now should be. It should be something that is seamless that people just go and the best as it is. The police have to do everything possible to put the necessary logistics so that the life and property can be secure during the election. Let's quickly talk about the concerns uh, from the aviation sector, and that's on the Daily Independent paper this morning. The price of Jet A1. Uh, also known as the aviation fuel, is, seem to be on the high. And you have these operators complaining, asking that government should come to their aid. I mean, once upon a time, Jet A1 uh, fuel sold for 200 naira, uh, <laughs> you know, but that's a different conversation right now. What are your thoughts? They have said that, you know, the prices of petrol had gone up, but, you know, the fair, the airfare has still remained uh, the same. Do, do you really agree with that part of the conversation? And what are you, really your thoughts that you know these operators are asking for government's help? No, I think there's this. Uh, um, I don't know. It's too many. I just watched. The, 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 I think the title is "The Rich Also Cry," and that is what seems to be happening now. Um, the, the poor have been crying, uh, and the one even said the poor they are talking about the masses, which also includes the rich. The prices of petroleum have this off the roof. In some states, it's sold as much as 400 to 500 naira per liter. That is what's supposed to cost about 150 something per liter. And even where you find them, you see Nigerians keen, they've been keen for the past three months for this product, um, that we're supposed to have seen every But then, but moving to the education, so this is not the first time the market, uh, the operators are crying out. Don't forget that sometime last year, the operators threatened to go on strike. Um, to stop flying because of the high cost of aviation fuel. And the federal government 
where they are going to intervene. I know that there was a, there was a meeting between the operators, the uh, NNPC, and also the House of Representatives or the Senate, I don't know which one has, where it was broke out that the price will be kept at about 600 naira per litre for some time, for some few weeks. But after that, nothing, nobody has said anything about it again. Now, they were, the operators also went ahead to say that they are going to increase, which I know they are going to increase, they are going to increase uh, prices of their tickets because they are operating at loss. I know that the federal government agency, at least the one that has to do with the protection, uh, consumer protection, came out and said that no, they cannot do that and the rest. And I said, what control do you have over a free market like the uh, uh, aviation sector? Are you saying that if people are buying um, the, the, the aviation uh, um, oil uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a, want to take their the, uh, 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 the affair, it's not possible. Because if you start doing that, then it might end up by cutting corner. And in aviation industry, you cannot cut corner. Because that was what led to the crashes that we noticed some years back, where they you um, uh, name them, Dana and the rest of them were crashing all over the place. Because they were cutting corners. But the fact is that they are going to do something. Because NFC currently imports practically over 80 to 90 percent of the aviation. And the marketers are saying, give us license, we can import our uh, these prices, we can sell and cut the system. Nothing has been done about that. The federal government has not done. Then it goes back to what we have always said in the past. If we have done the mix of making sure that we have our refineries in place, a country that produces um, food oil. They end up, they stop with oil, they end up importing um, petroleum products and even a petroleum. Wouldn't have been having this problem. I hope and be, I, I believe that the solution to this problem in the long run is the establishment of our own refineries where our crude oil will be refined and, and um, aviation oil is just like product of that, just like aviation. We are even talking about aviation energy. Go and find out how much it costs, it's uh, kerosene cost in Nigeria now. Go and find out the cost of kerosene is almost, if not higher than aviation fuel. So that is the problem. So there must be a short-term and long-term solution to this problem. And everything rests squarely on the federal government and the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. They are the ones that can save this uh, problem. If they don't, then the airlines have no option than to continue to increase their prices. And there's nothing we can do about it. All right, Chris, uh, uh, thank you very much for that one. Um, we'll just take a couple more before... Uh, we say goodbye to you. What are your thoughts on the civil society organizations who have embarked on a protest asking for the chairman of the EFCC to be removed? Um, it's something that uh, I'm sure a lot of Nigerians may not have been prepared for because our attention are on some other things. But um, we're told that leading, this is on the front page of the Daily Independent, we're told that leading civil society organizations, uh, numbering uh, over 100, over 100, uh, uh, have again trooped out, you know, on the streets of Lagos, you know, uh, with thousands of their members and supporters, you know, calling for the EFCC's uh, head to be removed because of his uh, disobedience of court orders and infringement of uh, what they call human rights of Nigerians or infringement on the human rights of Nigerians. Is this? Um, do we need this? Yes, we do. But the fact is that impunity is, is pure impunity on the part of the EFCC chairman. And that is what happens when you have a situation where an institution will it, it try to um, um, respect people, will try to put a kind of respect on people rather than the institution. Um, why should an EFCC chairman refuse court order? But you also know that the EFCC chairman is report, reporting to someone. If the EFCC chairman has refused to do the need to buy, not to obey court order, what has the person that appointed the what has the person and they are talking about the president? Is the president not aware? Is the president not not aware that this that this man is obeying court orders? I don't blame him. I don't blame him because he must have seen what others are doing that he's also doing that. So it is for the man the appointing authority, and that is why most of them are some of us say that the president is very weak. Weak in the sense that he is not on top of the issues as it were. If those that are under you are doing things that are not right and 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 bridging on uh, and constitutes what I call a national news and for you to bring them to order, it means that the president will not be able to do it. And once the president is not, the court has no right, no power of enforcement. The power of enforcement is in the executive. The court has given its order. The executive to act. But 
several others have been taken. That is, that is not the first time. Don't forget that the successful, uh, successive um, chairman of the ESCC before him that have done the Rebadu did that, the one there, the Sofarida did that, and that. so he's only following the path of it. But I think this man should be called to order that nobody is above the law. And if he has so, he's got so good that they are something in fashion and he's not doing it. Then, they should meet him, and if not, a bench warrant should be, should be issued and for him to be arrested anywhere they found it. And once such bench warrant has been issued, it is now for security agencies to make sure that he's arrested. He is not above the law. And I have to that with the, uh, with the story of Femi, Femi Panekayade, who made all sorts of allegations about coup and no coup, and was invited by the DSS yesterday. He said he was due for five hours and has been asked to come back on Wednesday. He goes beyond it. This is not the first time Femi Panekayade is opening his mouth to the same all sorts of things. I think so people like him should also be brought to book so that to act as a deterrent. You don't just invite him and just uh, and tell him, okay, don't talk like this again. He will, people like this will continue because they will continue to overheat the policy. Kofi, you know how the, the, the Rwanda genocide started. It's a statement like this. I said to people, and you ask yourself, here yeah, that he, he knows something that some of us don't know. He can't be, he, are you not trying to invite the army to take over after the election? Those are issues that are treasonable issues. And let me cover your issue. not just be allowed to just interview and go. And they allow him yet to go after the next. He has quickly called a press conference. Who does that? I start giving reasons and start apologizing that. That is not the way to proceed and talk to serve as a deterrent for others who want to pass. Uh, so that uh, this is not the way to go. Well, uh, Chris, I, I hope that, you know, he's learned his lesson and uh, with the commitment saying he would never, you know, tweet in that direction and in that light. Let's see how all of this pans out, you know, for us as we each closer to the elections and of course, as we exist as a people. But uh, on the Guardian newspaper, something quite interesting is that according to data that has been released, Niger is currently topping the country searching for love in 2023 and today is Valentine's Day. It's a bit related. Are you surprised that Nigerians are looking for love? Uh, maybe love might just be the solution to the world's problem. Sorry, we didn't come back I'm here from my team, I wasn't hearing good. Okay. So I say on the Guardian newspaper, uh, this is according to data that has been put out that Nigeria is currently on top of uh, the search, I mean, countries that are in search for love in 2023. And uh, that has been, you know, the information that's been put out uh, this morning on the Guardian newspaper. And I'm asking that today's Valentine's Day. Maybe, you know, love is actually the solution to the world's problem. And that's why Nigeria, uh, you know, is on top of the list. But are you surprised? I'm not surprised. that the best result that I've been research and, uh, uh, in the past where they said that Nigeria are the happiest people in the world. And um, I will tell you for free that if some of the things that is happening in Nigeria happen in some other countries, that would have been chaos. But we have a way of making ourselves happy. And uh, that is why um, <laughs> I totally agree with that. I said, oh, if, 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 if you just go into social media, you just realize that there's part of the problems we are going to. We're even making fun of it. You see people making skit of it, people laughing and reading this and just behaving as if nothing is at stake. And that, in itself, for me, has been the reason why our leaders have taken us for granted. Because if we face our problems squarely and hold these people accountable, it's just, just doesn't invite and say, oh, uh, God will take control, it is well, it has been testing, and the rest of them. They yeah, wouldn't find ourselves where we are. But I totally agree with that. In the day of love, if for one day we are going to share love, let us share love. But after sharing love, what next? You can't even share love when you don't have money in your pocket. When you know that you have money in the bank, you cannot collect where you cannot have money to buy food. This is, we're talking of those of us in the city. Mexico, you cannot imagine what those in the rural areas who don't even have access to some of this food this morning, what they are going through. I got reports from my village in Mungoko, in Imo State, how people are suffering. You even send money to your relatives in the village. They cannot collect it from the bank, so they cannot even feed. So that is the issue we should be looking at now. But the day of love, let us share love. But I, will, I also want to quickly talk about the pastor who decided, I know Kofi spoke about during the analysis. The pastor that decided to go to church uh, with AK-47, the House on the Rock have come out with this statement and uh, tried to give reasons for that and rest of them. But I think we should be wary of some of this in our, our pastors. 
and um, uh, and let them be above board. It is not everything you joke with. By bringing AK-47, what are you telling your convert that they should be carrying gun around or what? That is one, not what it should be. And we should be very, very mindful on some of the things we do, especially in the, at a time like this election and the high level of insecurity that's going on in the country. But I think, you know, I like the statement where you say we should be mindful of what we do, not holding brief for, you know, the action of the pastor, but it was more like you're trying to send a point, apparently teaching or preaching, and there needed to be some sort of illustration. We should have known better. That has been, you know, the question and the words in the mouth of a lot of Nigerians. But, well, these things actually happen. Vision and um, uh, mercy. Vision and action and spoken words are different things. If you just put that back thought as it's trending on social media without putting a message to it, do you know the message is passing? It's not there to explain. Nobody will start to look into an explanation on that. He gives a direct uh, image and impulse. So I believe that we should try as much as we should. He shouldn't be doing that. He's educated. He's supposed to know better. And he's not supposed to go about with such things. This is initially we thought that it was a talk, but a lot for us to realize that it was even given to him by a policeman. That policeman has been arrested and is going undergoing trial and may be dismissed anytime from now. We don't engage in such things. Whatever there are better ways of passing your message than necessarily uh, putting this kind of shenanigans across and trying to make what what point is he trying to make? I don't just understand. <laughs> All right, let's, let's look at the uh, uh, Labour Party. It's, it's a front page of the Daily Independent asking the Nigeria Police Force security agencies to stop attacks on its uh, supporters in Lagos. I'm sure you followed some of the events on Saturday when the party held its uh, mega rally in Lagos. Chris? Yes, um, I was the, uh, one of the anchor persons at the governorship, um, governorship, the Lagos the governorship debate that was held by Silverberg Group on Sunday. And all the major, six major political parties, the front runners were at that debate. It lasted for about three hours. The only major party that was not there was APC, as usual. And the issue of attack was raised by all the political parties. The PDP, the Labour Party, the SDP, representative ACAA, name them. They were all that saying that they were surprised that the state government, that the chief security officer of the state, who is the governor of the state, have not said any format to say anything to condemn the actions of this problem. I just said that that we, it has been making the round by a ballet uh, in a, uh, in a church and local government. He was warning everybody that refused to uh, vote for the political party, the APC, uh, within his environment, that they would be dealt with at the same time. And this, some of this transit is not for policy. So I believe and I hope that the Lagos State government and the government of Lagos State uh, will be able to rise to education, and the security agencies in Lagos will be able to rise to education. And you continue to relate uh, the, what I've been talking about the insecurity and the security. There is no way this election is going to hold under a pressure. We know what happened in 2019, where so many people were stopped from voting in some part of the state because they were voting for certain political parties and the rest of them. The, uh, the, the election, uh, electoral votes were destroyed, the ballot buses were destroyed and carted away with gun shooting and the rest of them in broad daylight and no single person was brought to do. And so we are not going to have a repeat in Lagos, especially Lagos, which is where you and I are domiciled. The attacks on the, uh, on the members of the Labour Party on Saturday, um, to me, was unnecessary. We are all Nigerians and we are free to be able to uh, go about our duties and vote for candidates of our choice. So I totally condemn it in, his, in, in, in all its ramifications. And we move to make people to put everything in place to make sure that in every part of this country, everybody has the right to vote for uh, candidates of their choice and not be cast by individuals for whatever reasons. Mm. Well, uh, it's really unfortunate the kind of politics uh, we seem to be practicing. I mean, if you look at the comments and reactions, uh, there are also voice recording of uh, those who are threatening, you know, the electorate of who to vote for and try to call them to supporting. But we just hope that this also can be taken care of by the security agencies. But quickly, I know this is going to be, you know, the crux of our conversation. We'd like to share your thoughts on this one. Elections would hold in 240 polling units nationwide. We know what. Yes, will not hold, won't hold. 
Uh, yes. Uh, just quickly, it, it will be you know part of a conversation this morning on the show. But we'd like to share your thoughts on this. INEC talked about these polling units without registered voters. Yes, uh, the, if they are not registered voters in this polling unit, then there will be no vote. But the fact is that why did the INEC create such a polling unit when he knows uh, that there won't be voters? Uh, is it that they were created in error or that they finally created it and people refused to come and vote? But the fact is that INEC have been able to identify those polling units, you know, 217 number, I think. And um, that is what is going to be. So uh, electoral materials will not be declared to those areas. And there will be no election. So, it, the INEC has the power to create those uh, units and also have the right to be able to cancel it if you meet, know that it is not meeting up to the expectation as uh, expressed by the Electoral Act uh, as amended. So, I don't have any issue with that. And um, if they think that it's not, it, it, those polling units are not viable, but I hope that materials will not be sent to that area and not be used by individuals to come print and now send back as to, as places that people voted, um, those units counted. So it's good that they're coming out early enough to be able to uh, state those uh, units. And they have also published the list of the units, and that is what it should be. All right, Chris, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's been a thrill having you this morning. Uh, you've so passionately uh, uh, analyzed uh, some of the headlines that we've had the time to do. So we once again apologize for the initial hiccups we had uh, interfered with uh, having you early as uh, earlier than we did today. But thank you so much, All right. Chris. Thank Kennedy. you very much, Kofi. All right. When we say we watch the, the new title dollar. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You're in Lagos. We're in the same Lagos, so we have to see. Chris Kennedy Wando no is a chartered arbitrator. He joined us via our phone uh, in Lagos. Chris, have a wonderful day and happy Valentine's Day to you again. We have more conversations up next. And when we return, like I mentioned, we'll be looking at, you know, what this means for our elections. I mean, 240 polling units will not be part of the, there will be no elections uh, in this polling unit across the uh, entire country. I mean, we're looking at 28 states right there. Uh, when we return, we'll be having uh, more in-depth analysis on that. Please stay with us.